I'm going to combine our confession and assurance within our, uh, our Lord's Supper preparation. I think we kind of had God's greeting at the beginning, or maybe I didn't even really have that. So, you know, well, God greets us. Of course he greets us. He greets us to come to his house. And it's even on the screen. Look at that. Thank you, Diane. You're amazing. As we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion, let us remember the scripture that, the, that calls us to examine ourselves before God. We are taught that eating and drinking unworthily brings judgment upon ourselves. So let us therefore ask God for the proper spirit in which to celebrate the sacrament. Almighty God, before whom we can neither, with neither secret thought nor hidden deed, grant us your spirit that we may know our hearts, our lives, and our, most, and our most thoughts as you know them. Grant us your grace that we may repent sincerely of all sin, find peace with you through our Lord Jesus Christ, and grow in assurance of salvation in him. May the celebration of our Savior's infinite love and his redeeming death bring joy to us and glory to you. Amen. You, Father, for the on power of our Savior's death, for our share his victory over sin. Open our hearts as we prepare for this celebration, that it may strengthen us in our faith, establish us in hope, and confirm us in our love. In his name, amen. Brothers and sisters, sisters, let us first examine our faith. We all confess the truth of God as taught by Scripture and summarized in the life creeds of the church. By this faith, we take to ourselves Christ and all his benefits, so that for us to live is Christ. Lord God, author of all true believing, firm faith as we prepare holy sacrament. I admit it's hard to read. Maybe I can read it better on there. I guess I'm getting older and my eyes are getting weaker. I have a tough time actually reading it. Pardon? Yeah, yes. That's all right. We'll read it from the screen. Let us further examine our hope. Christian hope rests upon the finished work of Christ as Savior. The Holy Gospel teaches that all our righteousness is in him alone. God's children rely wholly upon the merits of Christ, find in him their strength and victory, and confidently expect his return in glory. They look forward to celebrating this Holy Supper anew with him in the kingdom, and they will surely be received by God at his table. Most merciful Father, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may abound in hope. Let us also examine our love, both for God and our neighbors. Remember the great and first commandment to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let us consciously determine to live a life of loving service to him through Christ our Lord. Let us also search ourselves to determine whether we love our neighbors as Christ commands. Do we unselfishly live for the welfare of others? Do our lives reflect the godly virtues of obedience, fidelity, integrity, justice, humility, and contentment? Do we seek reconciliation with all our neighbors in all cases of offense? Dear Father, daily increase in us the greatest gift of all, our Christian love. If these marks of spiritual life are not evident in us. We may not presume to approach his table. Those, therefore, who live in self-righteousness, who hope in works or virtues of their own, and who do not show love to God and neighbor, have no true place at this Lord's Supper. We should not be deterred by any sin lingering against our will. As we find faith, hope, and love within us, we ought gladly to obey our Lord's command and come with full expectation to God's open house of mercy. Gracious God, we love and adore you in our Lord. 
we thank you for reconciling us to yourself in him. We rejoice in being received as your children. Prepare us by your Holy Spirit for this sacrament. Help us to come in the assurance, by it we shall be spiritually revived and strengthened in faith, hope, and love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> I had an illustration that, uh, so I grabbed a loaf of bread out of the freezer. Um, it's not really a biblical loaf, it's after they come out with sliced bread. And, uh, you know, and the way we do Lord's Supper in, in our church, in most Protestant uh, churches, is, is, you know, we gather here at the table, and it's a very reverent thing. It's a very solemn uh, meal, and that's a wonderful thing. And often I think that they, they created it to be very solemn and in this way because of maybe the issues that Paul the Apostle had back in the New Testament when he wrote the letter to Corinthians. As you remember, the wealthy people showed up, and they ate all the food and drank the wine before the poor people got there, or the people that had to work and the people that, that couldn't get there in time. And so Paul said, you know, when he talks about drinking judgment to yourself, that's, that's what he was talking about. He was talking about people that couldn't even wait for their fellow brothers and sisters to get there and to be able to share a meal and remember Christ's death and sacrifice. And, you know, one of the things that, you know, I want to start doing is begin to, to really break bread and to really celebrate who God is in a sacrifice over a big meal, a meal such as Thanksgiving that we had uh, a couple weeks ago, and to be able to have turkey and potatoes and mashed potatoes, but also in that, invite in people that don't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and talk about why we do what we do, and have a conversation over a good meal and a hot cup of coffee. And that's something that I I often think about and something I want to somehow implement within my own life and with the lives of our members. And uh, that's really what the Lord's Supper is all about. 